Okay, we ready? All right. Well, thank you all for being very patient. It was a little bit longer session than we expected, but we're here to talk about Senate File 1, which is uh, the on mental health. And as you know, mental health is the topic at every single corner of the state. And it's the number one issue here at the Capitol. And that's why we, ha why we have Senate File 1. One in, e in five people will develop mental illness, and nearly 800 people died by suicide in 2017. 50% of all mental illnesses emerge by age 14 and 75% by age 24. 48 youth between ages 10 and 19 took their own lives in 2016. The system is not broken, but it's critical we rebuild the system. So Cenophile rebuilds the system by our commitment of 25 million to prioritize mental health services so everyone can get the help they need. Whether it's on the campus, at home with your newborn, in a homeless shelter, on the farm, in the courthouse, in a, we are all committed to this problem. When people are suffering from mental health, again, we all suffer. So investments were made in Minnesota um, mental health system and services by mobile crisis centers, delivering mental health services through telemedicine, housing, crisis response, support programs for the homeless youth, the ag community, a focus on ch children's mental health through school-linked mental health, and we're really strengthening the telepresence part of mental health services, and support in criminal justice system for those affected with the Yellow Line Project in Blue Rift County. Uh, up next, I, I'm very happy to have uh, Senator Goggin to talk about the housing options that we have in the bill. Well, thank you, Senator Rosen. And, uh, Really, I really want to thank you for uh, including my uh, housing uh, portion in your bill. Uh, what my housing bill, uh, mental health housing bill, uh, covers is bridges uh, for uh, those with mental health that are really having trouble with uh, keeping their housing. Uh, this provides housing subsidies to people living with serious mental health il illnesses while they are waiting on, on the waiting list for federal Section 8 housing assistance. Uh, second part is Landlord uh, Risk Mitigation Fund. A lot of our uh, uh, people that are, are having problems uh, maintaining housing are also having a hard time finding housing to begin with because landlords uh, are not wanting to uh, really take on that risk of uh, having these folks as uh, renters in their, in their homes. So what this does is it, it uh, builds a fund for these landlords so that they uh, reduce the risk uh, of any damage that might be done to the homes uh, and or any uh, payments that are missed or, or anything like that. Uh, and then lastly, we have the support of housing. And it's permanent support of housing for people with serious mental illnesses, and it connects them with the resources and supports they need, including mental health treatment and uh, treatment in state-owned operated facilities and access to their permanent supportive housing uh, really significantly reduces their time in, in the systems that, uh, uh, whether they be incarcerated or not. Um, this just helps them maintain stability and that's what this, my housing uh, bill is all about, is maintaining stability for these uh, individuals with mental illnesses and uh, uh, I think it's a great uh, step in the right direction and I look forward to uh, continuing work on this in the future, thank you. Good afternoon, I'm Senator Rich uh, Dreheim, and the two pieces I would like to touch on are um, the, the gap we have in the two-year colleges for mental health, so there's some language in there to help fill that gap of the two-year institutions, and then we also have uh, another bill included in this on uh, farmer mental health with all the struggling uh, that our local farmers are doing. Uh, there's some appropriation in there to expand that, so thank you. Oh, yes. Uh, well, thank you. I'm uh, State Senator Carla Nelson. I uh, live in Rochester, Minnesota. Uh, Olmsted County is uh, my area. Rochester, Chatfield, Dover, Yoda, Chatfield, Byron, St. Charles, about 10 uh, school districts. Uh, and I'm chair of the Education Finance Committee. Uh, I am really appreciative of the uh, direction that we're moving regarding school-linked mental health services. I've spoken with... Uh, educators across our state, uh, social workers, counselors, education leaders, teachers, parents, and it's amazing that uh, the number one concern of our school counselors now 
uh, is mental health. That's a very different picture than when I was teaching. The issues were, have you completed your standards? Are you ready for graduation? Uh, what are your plans after high school? And yet the number one issue in our schools today uh, is, is mental health. And uh, we have done, we've made some strides there. We've seen some school-linked mental health. And going back and talking to our parents and our school leaders and teachers, uh, they have said that that's been very effective and very helpful uh, to have the mental health services where the kids are with the school-linked mental health services. Um, we also have seen that there has been uh, terrific results with uh, telemental health. And that uh, is perhaps for a lot of reasons. Uh, the students that we're dealing with are digital natives. They grew up with screens and interacting with screens. And there's also a little bit uh, another level of a comfort, perhaps, in dealing with a counselor uh, through a screen instead of that person right uh, in, in front of you. So we've seen great, we've seen great results there. And I believe that telepresence, telehealth, telemedicine, particularly in the area of mental health, can be extremely important. And when we think about school-linked mental health, um, it's imperative that we have our services where our kids are. You've heard from so many that there's so many barriers uh, in people being able to access mental health services. And having those mental health services in the schools where the kids are can really help um, eliminate uh, some of those barriers. So I appreciate Senator Rosen's great work on focusing on mental health in our, in our file here, Senate File 1, uh, and uh, very supportive of and believe that every dollar that we spend in school-linked mental health will lead to a great rewards and brighter futures for all of our kids. Well, uh, good afternoon. Uh, my name my name is Senator David Senge. I'm also from Rochester. I just want to speak a little bit about uh, a couple of projects and then uh, uh, maybe speak a little bit to what we uh, have done last year. But maybe to precede that, uh, to note that all oh, this is Center File 1, uh, there has been a lot of work put into this. Uh, in fact, that is why perhaps uh, we are where we are today in terms of maybe the delay. But this is so important that we really wanted to work hard on and put a package together that uh, is going to be an outstanding package. In fact, I think it is. So maybe just a couple other projects to mention. Uh, one of them uh, uh, is associated with one of the counties that Senator Rosen's a part of, uh, Blue Earth County. They have what we call a Yellow Line Project. And uh, the Yellow Line Project is a project that is uh, getting, frankly, national acclaim out of Blue Earth County, Minnesota, that has to do with uh, individuals that are mentally ill that might be brought to a jail, and then what? And uh, so the jail uh, actually program has an assessment program where they identify whether or not this person is really there because of mental illness or a deliberate crime. And if it's mental illness, they certainly move that person out of that jail setting into, into a, a treatment mode, which is uh, something that we always wanted and uh, but not, have, frankly, have always had. And I can't, I can't imagine myself personally who grew up with a, in, a, in a home with a mental illness, both dad and mom, uh, had the sheriff or anyone else came to our house and took either one of them away and, and put them in jail because they weren't, if you will, fit to be in, in society. Uh, that would have been crushing, and it would be crushing for any family that has to experience. So this Yellow Line project is, is an outstanding project. We're going to implement that across Minnesota. The other one I want to mention real quickly is something we call competency restoration. We've got a lot of people right now, in fact, they're literally not their fault, clogging the system in Anoka, the Anoka Regional Treatment Center that need to be released. And uh, working with the Council for State Governments and their Institute for Justice, we're going to have a program, and, uh, frankly, not a necessary program, a task force put together, going to work for two years. We're going to take those individuals by order of the Department of Human Services, send them back to their counties. But we're going to have a, a, a task force working two years in terms of how do we restore these people to competency, such as in the case of many of them, they can stand trial. Uh, right now, they're, they're held in Anoka because they're not ready for trial. Uh, we can't hold them there anymore because, in fact, we've got other people that need those beds. So they're going back into the communities. But we need to identify how we restore these people to a level of competency such that they can stand trial. 
Well, let me just back up, uh, or maybe to going back to last year a little bit. Uh, this is a continuation of, of, a, of a great, I think, uh, program that we put an emphasis that our Senate Republican Caucus put together on mental illness. Uh, we started last year with the Crisis Center program, $30 million, which has now established or will be establishing six crisis centers across Minnesota. And so what are they? Uh, they're that place where at 3 o'clock in the morning, if in fact you have that crisis, you're going to have a place to take that individual, either personally as a part of the family or perhaps even law enforcement. Whatever the case might be, uh, 24 hours a day, 365, they're going to be there to uh, be available for those kind of needs to stabilize that patient, maybe keep them there a couple of days if that's necessary. In addition to that, what we had in last year's bonding bill is another 25 million, actually 30 million, to go into what we call supportive housing. And that's a program whereby individuals when they're maybe out of the crisis center but yet need a little more focus and attention from the standpoint of taking meds and so on and so forth, can go into a housing unit situation where they'll get casual monitoring, make sure they're taking their medications, and hopefully work through that, through that issue with themselves and out into society again. So a lot of emphasis. And by the way, we've probably talked about seven or eight projects here, but in fact, this bill is maybe 20 or 30 projects. So. Uh, a big compilation of good things, and we look forward to this bill passing and moving through the system and being implemented at the end of this session. Thank you so much. Thank you. Any questions? Is this bill hitting the floor soon, or where are we at? It has already gone through uh, Senator Benson's committee, and it's on its way to, I believe, um, it's passed the rules, and it's on its way to judiciary, I believe. It's, I think it's judiciary, so it's it's making its own special track. But as as Senator Senjum said, it's um, it's been a, a combination a compilation of many bills, and most of them have been heard already. But the focus was to make sure that we get an outstanding commitment to mental health. I remember meeting with my seven counties and all the county commissioners, and it used to be potholes and roads and bridges were their number one concern. And by far, without a doubt, every single one of them says mental health is their biggest issue right now. And we didn't even touch on what we're doing for veterans. We have a shelter-linked mental health program in there for homeless youth. That's an outstanding program. That's probably one of the first in the nation. We've got to get this right. Senator Nelson mentioned the telepresence. You could do telepresence in, of course, the school links. Uh, these children are wired for, for ITV and, and, and telepresence, but also in the shelter. You could do that. You could do this with the ag community. We have one person that covers the entire state for the ag community on mental health, and he's 70 and he's retiring. So how are we going to be able to deliver these services in a new and innovative way? And that is through telepresence. I think I'm very, very excited about that. Um, and we are investing back into the mobile crisis units, too. Those have been highly effective for our counties. So very, very proud of this bill. Um, it's got a little more ways to go, but we're going to get it to the floor, and um, and people uh, are excited about it too. So thank you. If there's no Can questions. How the money is spent? Did you say 25 million? Can you just roughly say where that goes as these various projects? Well, a large portion of that will be on the school linked mental health. That is an investment we want to make right now with school linked mental health. We can only get to 52 percent of the schools. 52% of the kids. So an investment needs to be made there. If we do it with telepresence, we can spread out that money a little, a little more and get to 100% of those students. And then we're just gonna apportion the rest of the money into the, the appropriate slots. Uh, we don't have that done yet at this point, but the, the main thing is a huge commitment of 25 million. Is there a bonding element at all this year? <laughs> I'll turn it over. <laughs> Uh, we work in a biennial way. I would say that uh, as, uh, as we do have a bonding bill next to whenever that might be, uh, there will be uh, additional crisis centers and probably, well, some supportive housing goes into this. Having six across Minnesota is fine. It's a good start, but we're a big state and there's lots and lots of interest. And just to mention, as Senator Rosen pointed out, the county, uh, the county's interest in this. Uh, last year on those crisis center bills, there was uh, 87 counties and 87 resolutions that came to my office. And they weren't, they, they weren't sought after by me, but they came to my office uh, supporting the crisis center idea and supporting the need to do more in mental health and mental illness. Do you have any 
you have a sense of um, support from the DFL in the House? Are there pieces of this or the entire package that have counterparts that are moving through the House already and have some traction there? Yes. Yeah. No, it's it's hard to argue against mental health. I think the 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 place where there will be some differences is how much money and, and uh, you know, perhaps how it's, how it's, um, how it's delegated out, but for the most part, how can you argue on these 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 issues? You can't. We we need to take care of these issues. And there's a this is another one of those bills, and we're doing many of these bills in a bipartisan fashion. Um, and Senate File One is definitely in the hands of the House Democrats, and it will be another bipartisan issue that will be completed. Okay. Thank you very much. Is the intent? To